Have you ever found it difficult to explain your personal needs to others? If you have, you're not alone. As you can see in this wellness wheel, our personal wellness is comprised of a variety of needs. In this video, we'll discuss how we can specifically approach our social needs in a healthy way by considering and communicating our personal needs and limitations. To learn more about the physical aspect of the wellness wheel, check out our sleep toolkit in the links below. In this video, we will focus on how you can recognize your needs, why it's important to do so, and how to communicate your needs and limitations to the people around you. Personal limits, or boundaries, aren't meant to restrict others' behavior, but by talking about your needs, we can aim to create more compassionate and supportive learning environments for everyone. As you may have experienced yourself, university learning doesn't end when you step out of the classroom. While completing assignments and collaborating with your peers may be the most visible of your learning experiences, there's actually a lot more involved. You likely have a combination of factors, such as your physical and mental health, your life at home, your relationships, work, volunteering, and more that contribute towards your ability to learn at any given time. We may not be able to always commit ourselves entirely to our work, and that's okay but we can make that situation less scary, stressful, or overwhelming by communicating our needs. Setting boundaries is one way of doing this. Recognizing that you are operating within these various limits and acknowledging them as vital aspects of your learning experience can help you plan around them, which can reduce the strain that your limits may have on your mental well-being. Letting someone know about your personal needs isn't selfish, it's helpful. By communicating your needs, you're creating a more supportive environment that works for you as well as for those around you. So setting your boundaries and communicating your needs is important, but how does one go about putting that into practice? Knowing your personal limits may seem a daunting task, but it doesn't have to be. To help you reflect on various needs that might arise in student life, we've prepared this handout. Pause this video and take some time to consider the questions. Are you comfortable with these scenarios? If not, keep watching for how you can communicate your needs and establish boundaries. Now that we've reflected on what our needs are, let's consider how we can communicate them tactfully. We recommend taking a three-step approach, acknowledging the situation, communicating your boundaries, and trying to meet them halfway if possible. ACT, or ACT for short. For example, your roommate invites you to go to the beach with them, but you can't go because you have an assignment due. Let's see how this dialogue might play out. My study group is going to go to the beach to soak up some sun. Do you want to join us? That sounds like so much fun. When are you planning to go? Yeah, it's uh, Wednesday this week. The weather's supposed to be perfect. No, I'd love to go, but I actually have a project due the next morning. I don't think I can make it this time. Maybe I can go next week instead? Couldn't you study at the beach? I can't study at the beach, so that won't work for me. I really want to do well on this assignment. That makes sense. We'll miss you. Have fun. Maybe I can join you next week? That sounds good. Let's review how this dialogue followed the three-step approach. First, Annika acknowledged the situation by expressing her interest in going. Then, she communicated her boundary. Finally, she suggested a compromise. Although Minori was respectful of Annika's boundaries, it doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes, the other person might be insistent or try to pressure you. If Minori had been pressuring Annika, here's how Annika might have followed up. You can see more examples of language you can use in the scenarios on our handout. Unfortunately, not everyone is ready to have this conversation, and sometimes a compromise isn't possible. However, taking this approach may reduce the friction that comes from these often emotional conversations. Having an open mind and letting everyone communicate their perspective can go a long way. Remember, these boundaries aren't meant for restricting others' behavior. Instead, they're to help you recognize and take care of your own needs. 
but by being aware of each other's boundaries and keeping a compassionate, open-minded mindset, you can help create a supportive environment for everyone. The reality is that this process takes time and practice, but it's worth it. To practice the three-step method or to explore what needs you may have, check out our handouts and additional resources. We've linked them for you below. For more helpful toolkits and resources, visit our website at learningcommons.ubc.ca or follow us on Twitter and Instagram at UBC Learn. Thanks for watching.